much for um, uh, having me. What you guys are doing in Washington and the whole state of Washington, I feel for you guys. And uh, but what you're doing for dentistry, this will never be repeated again, I'm sure. But you're awesome. Thank you. So. Um, uh, my, I'm going to talk about, uh, using dental lasers, of course, like the, uh, topic says there, and just a little bit of, um, a disclosure there. You can read that, um, better than me. So, um, anyway, um, my biggest claim to fame is getting my mastership from the Academy, uh, my most, uh, proud professional accomplishment. And, um, uh, <clears throat> This is where I live. It's in Fayetteville, West Virginia, home of the New River Gorge Bridge. We have a, uh, a booming population of 2,500 people, uh, and it usually uh, swells just a little bit during whitewater rafting season to about 2,800 people. So it's a really beautiful place, and, and we draw from about three counties, uh, probably about a hundred thousand in population, and uh, half of those uh, twenty five hundred people live at my house. This is uh, my family. Uh, have five sons and uh, four daughters in law and eight grandkids. And couldn't be couldn't be more proud and happy. And just a, a little bit of a background. Um, I did graduate way back in 1980. I suspect there's a lot of people on here that weren't even born by then. Um, and, uh, and I do love teaching, which is um, uh, trained over uh, 3,000 dentists in, in different wavelengths. So it's always been a lot of fun for me. And uh, I've always been in private practice. I, I do have a... Uh, um, adjunct professorship at uh, West Virginia University uh, because I host dental students and dental hygiene students at, at the office. But um, we have a, uh, we are a fee-for-service office, um, no PPOs, and um, we, we do have a ton of patients. So, you know, we're, we're fairly popular because of, of a lot of the things that we do here. Um, and how I do what I do, we do everything, um, mostly, uh, mostly uh, things that uh, the technology has helped me do uh, very efficiently. So, um, and I'll talk about some of these products on here. Again, I don't own stock in any of these products, so not coming at you from that point. Now, one of the most important things that uh, I figured out early on was, um, uh, being practical, capable of being done or put into effect, efficiency, the ability to avoid wasting materials, time, or energy. Because basically that's all we do in dentistry, uh, materials, time, and energy. And competition, it's the process of trying to get something someone else is trying to get. So those are things I think about all the time, and, and uh, I'm entering my 40th year of practice, and, and it uh, keeps getting better all the time. So one of the things that uh, has uh, helped me along the road is, is developing the concept of change, not being afraid of it. And uh, it's simply making or becoming different, the act or instance of making or becoming different. And uh, we've used that to our advantage in, in, uh, in our private practice. So these are four dates that um, always uh, roll around in my mind, 1987, 9-11, uh, 2008, and 2020. These are all things that happened within our country that uh, made the practice of dentistry different after each one of the events in, in those years. And uh, <clears throat> it doesn't bother me at all. I know the coronavirus has hit hard across the country. And uh, you know, just like everybody else, I, I'm very concerned about, about its effect. But I, but I also know, you know that um, there will be a tomorrow and uh, we're all in this together and we will get through it together. 
no problem. So some of the things that have already changed in the office from uh, about three weeks ago, this is a sign up in the office now, and these are just things you ask patients. You have to be very particular when you're hosting patients in, in the office, so we do things like that. And um, this is one of my favorite quotes of all time, uh, W. Edwards Deming, it's not necessary to change, survival is not mandatory. And if you think that through a little bit, if you're still doing things the way you did it when you got out of school, <laughs> then you know, you're probably behind the times. You need to you know, be able to think how to change things. And this is um, you know, what happens when we get stuck in the rut and we keep doing the same thing over and over again. When does the cycle break? It's, you know, when you, when you make a break, you gotta, gotta think outside the box every once in a while. So usually in a, in a live uh, seminar, I ask this question, the seven most expensive words in business are, and if somebody uh, has that answer, you know, I'd almost send you a free gift. I'm, I'm not sure who or how many people are on here, but seven most expensive words in business. We have always done it that way. So when somebody talks like that to you, you know, me personally, if you say that to me, I just smile and move away. <laughs> you know, it's nobody I want to deal with. So today we're going to look at uh, the 2780 and the 940 wavelengths. The uh, 2780 is the all tissue laser. That means hard and soft tissue and the 940 is for soft tissue only, and commonly known as a diode laser. And um, my laser is in the forefront here on, in this photo. And if you notice, it looks like a hospital operating room. So we, we take care of a lot of patients. We do do some hospital dentistry, but that's how important the laser is to me. I don't go to uh, uh, the hospital without a laser. That's how much we use it. Now the laser is one of many tools you saw in that uh, earlier slide. We've got about every tool possible to, uh, to complete our dentistry. So these are always fun days at the hospital. We, we typically start early, finish late, but um, uh, we take care of a lot of patients that way. And in this quick video, you'll see uh, one of my students, uh, one of my students doing uh, some laser dentistry there. And it, it is a patient in the operating room and uh, what better way for a student to practice on somebody that's asleep and very comfortable, but she's simply doing a uh, phrenectomy on, on this young patient. And, um, you know, most phrenectomies are done in 30, 30 seconds, a minute. They, they don't take long at all, but that's the beauty of the uh, laser itself. Now, this is one of my uh, students, soon to be a, an associate in my office, but uh, I'm just going to play part of this for you because uh, she... Uh, So Margaret, Margaret has just told you in, in, uh, in seven weeks, she became a master at using the laser. And uh, it, it is not difficult technology. The learning curve is fairly short, especially for uh, an experienced dentist that uh, uh, if you can use a high speed handpiece, you can certainly use a laser handpiece too. 
And um, over the years, I've hosted quite a few dental students. And um, uh, this is another one that uh, just graduated too. But you notice Margaret said she was down here for seven weeks. Some of them, you know, get here for six. Some of them stay for eight. Just depends on uh, what the demand is at, at the dental school. <clears throat> so LASER is an acronym for light amplification by the stimulated emission of radiation. Um, and I'll tell you some really easy things about it. The, uh, the ones that I use are the erbium chromium at 2.78 microns and the uh, diode at uh, 940 and 980. And uh, also for, for some of you guys uh, that use the Diagno Dent, that's a laser too. It's at 655 nanometers. And you know the, the ones that we primarily use are in the infrared uh, part of the uh, spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum. And infrared means you can't see uh, the, the beam itself. That's all it really means. The most important thing that I can say today, dental lasers produce either visible or invisible thermal radiation. That's all laser ener energy is, is thermal radiation and it's not ionizing radiation. We reserve that for um, the other end of the spectrum, uh, such as x-rays. So some of the laser tissue interactions, we have reflection, absorption, uh, transmission, or scattering. The most important of those characteristics, of course, is absorption, if you're a laser dentist. And uh, <clears throat> what happens during absorption, the laser energy, hits the target tissue and causes a physical change in the target tissue and depends on the laser wavelength, the tissue composition, how much pigmentation, and most significantly, the uh, water content of the target tissue. <clears throat> so off of the uh, characteristics absorption chart, down at the bottom in red is the uh, erbium class. It is most efficiently and best absorbed in water, followed by hydroxyapatite. And we find hydroxyapatite in everything else that we do in dentistry. So it's about the perfect wavelength for that. Up near the top in red is the uh, diode wavelengths. And notice that it is best absorbed in melanin followed by water. <clears throat> so some of the photobiological effects, photothermal effects include coagulation and vaporization, uh, photoacoustic, cellular disruption, and laser-induced fluorescence for caries detection. And we'll talk about all three of these things as we go through here. And um, <clears throat> photochemical effects that stimulate chemical reactions and break chemical bonds. Where would that be um, useful to us? Uh, if you had to take a veneer off, you can actually use a laser to debond that. And if you're real good at it, the whole prosthesis falls off uh, in one piece and you may be able to reuse it. And um, the biostimulation, some, somewhat understated, but biostimulation provides immediate pain relief, wound healing, and collagen growth. All things that are important to me as a laser dentist. <clears throat> laser diagnostics, visual inspection and probing using an explore is 58% accurate. This is out of a textbook. Digital bite wing radiograph, 67 accurate. Laser diagnostics, however, is 99.9% .9 accurate. Wow, big difference, huh? So this is my original diagno dent from back in the 80s. Uh, what a great tool that was to find those uh, very small cavities. And with a small cavity, you only had to do a small filling. Okay, and um, pretty neat device. We actually do not use this anymore. Uh, it's uh, here for historical purposes, but this is what we use now. These are uh, SoproCare uh, um, 
camera systems. They not only do photography, but they have a carries mode and a uh, perio mode. And I'll show you examples of both of those. So these are in all three of the hygiene rooms inside the office here where we do most of this um, diagnostic. Um, <clears throat> and if you have a case like this, you, you might rub an explorer over that and it doesn't catch it all. Does that mean there's no carries there? Of course not. But uh, with, um, with this camera system, the Sopro Care camera system, you actually fluoresce the um, tooth surface. And, you know, it's accepted that green is healthy and red is a disease state. So, you know, and with a laser, because it's uh, so pinpoint accurate, we can go in and just remove the diseased areas. And, um, and, and we restore, simple as that. And something like that, of course, would require no anesthesia with the laser. There is a sensation, but it's not uncomfortable. And then from the um, <clears throat> practice management side, there are two codes that we use for something like this, the DO600 and the D2391. And something else that we've added to our armamentarium last year was this three second curing light. Uh, now that uh, all the composites have caught up to uh, uh, fast cures, this is a huge time saver. It's, it's so efficient, um, it's hard to measure, but you know, we, we do a lot of dentistry with that. And um, it has been a, a very welcome tool in the office. So just a quick video, show you how we do this in the office. Uh, and we run the camera through there and you can take still photos with this. You can do videos with it. You can do just about anything. But right now we're in a carries mode setting on, on the camera. And when we reflect that up there, you can see the color change on the computer screen. So we do, um, almost everybody has that uh, done on them. So again, the DO600 is the uh, carries detecting nomenclature. It's for non-ionizing uh, diagnostic procedure. And it's been around since uh, January 1st of 2017. And what it does, it can help you monitor a, uh, the uh, development of a cavity if, if you so choose. Here, if, if it's a cavity, we're going to use the laser and restore it uh, as soon as we discover it. <clears throat> so these are uh, the uh, two, two of the lasers that I have in the office. They're identical. Since this uh, photo was made, uh, we've added a third one. So we actually have three of these I-plus um, units in, in the office. And um, somebody told me one time, it's, it's like you have a, an ATM machine in there. Well, it, it is. You know, there's, you can do some dentistry in a rural area like where I live at. Since we see a ton of kids, you know, we, we need to be efficient in the office. And, and um, it, it helps a whole lot having the lasers in here. So in a couple of hand pieces that come with the laser, we have uh, something that looks like a, uh, I call it a slow speed, but it just has a tip, just like a burr does. And the energy comes out the end of, end of the tip. And then we have another one uh, I call a high speed. It's like a lens on the end of the hand piece. And uh, it kind of magnifies the energy coming out of the, uh, out of the hand piece. So that's a, a more rapid reduction, if you will. And cut faster with that. <clears throat> and so we'll look at some uh, soft tissue applications of the 940 and combination procedures. And this is uh, the one that I have in the office. It runs at 940 nanometers. It has like a uh, surgical handpiece on it, a disposable tip that you can see at the end of the handpiece. And um, this is the beauty of this system. It has icons. All you got to do is press the icon. You need to learn how to use the uh, handpiece or the tip 
but all the settings are pretty much done for you, which, which is, is real helpful. You can imagine students using this and all they do is pick out a picture, what matches what I'm supposed to be doing and they learn to use the hand piece. So if we look at the soft tissue aspects, you get like, uh, there's about 16 presets that, that we keep on the machine so that uh, if the student uh, can identify what procedure they're supposed to be doing, then it gets real easy for them to, uh, to be able to do this. And this is an example of a um, um, diode laser phrenectomy. This is the immediate end result. And I mean immediate, long enough to rinse the patient out, take a photo. And um, this is it at 24 hours. You can see the granulation tissue filling back in. And most patients, and, and this wasn't done with uh, injection, just topical, but most patients will tell you it was barely sore. <clears throat> and another thing we use the diode for is to whiten teeth. Uh, and there are times in the year when whitening is very popular. It has a uh, quick disconnect handpiece that looks like a Schick razor. And you go through the process of uh, putting your dam on there and then your chemicals. And the chemicals are actually activated by the uh, laser energy, which uh, in 32 minutes we can do a, a full mouth whitening. That's two trips around um, all the teeth. So we're, we're definitely used to seeing results like that all the time. And uh, one of the um, more popular things that we use this for is for pain therapy, believe it or not. Uh, lots of TMD dysfunction, um, you know, so and this only, only penetrates muscles, no hard tissue with the diode laser. And this hand piece, is a, uh, another hand piece on there that, um, uh, uh, again, on the quick disconnect, you can see the large circumference of it. Uh, you know, if you go to a chiropractor, you may see this very same hand piece at the chiropractor's office. They use them like crazy in there uh, for, for good reason. It's very effective. So again, the beauty of this system is you just gotta press a button and once you know the motion of the hand piece, it's, it's pretty easy to do. And um, you can use this on paresthesia cases. You can use it for trismus. Uh, and, and, and basically we use it a lot for uh, muscle spasms. And uh, if you can feel a knot in there, you can, you can help the patient out a lot just by running this laser over top of it. Just a real neat procedure. This is biostimulation, by the way, and it helps, uh, helps relieve pain from patients. <clears throat> and of course, laser safety is uh, very important. And the most important thing is we always put uh, laser safety glasses on the patient first. The assistants wear them and I wear them. And um, they are specific glasses to, uh, to control the uh, um, penetration of any um, scatter radiation or anything, which is next to nothing, by the way. <clears throat> and I'll talk about aerosol in just a little bit. That's the new buzzword in dentistry since the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic um, aerosol. So we'll look at the uh, 2780, commonly known as the uh, I-plus. But in a case like this, and again, I use it for all phases of dentistry. Not the only tool I have, but uh, definitely the most effective. And um, you know, to, to change somebody's appearance, and this, this might look a little difficult there, but um, you know, somebody says, fix my broken front tooth and you know, getting ready to go to the prom and so on and so forth. Not much you can do if you haven't seen this patient over a long period of time, but this is what we did with them. I went in and prepped uh, the facials of these teeth with a laser, I put a uh, finish line uh, with a rotary diamond. But uh, this is what um, uh, laser prep teeth look like. And a couple of things that you'll 
figure out here shortly because I'm going to tell you, but this was the end product, just um, about 45 minutes worth of uh, treatment time. Most importantly, a real happy patient. She got what she wanted. And um, these are uh, chair-side laminate veneers, uh, just really composite, 2960 times two. So why do we use the laser on restorable, bondable, cementable surfaces? There's, there's two reasons to remove the smear layer, which is um, uh, commonly uh, blamed for uh, post-operative sensitivity. And we want to increase the available surface area for bonding. That's, that's exactly what we did with those uh, two front teeth. So we've got a uh, super area to bond to, and you saw how rough it looked in there. So that makes it makes it real easy to uh, to get a uh, a good uh, bond job done. So <clears throat> that's why we use the laser on every restoration. Uh, even if I cut it with a high speed, the last instrument to hit that will be the laser. If you look at uh, SEMs, which are obviously not mine, but uh, borrowed. Uh, from textbooks, um, laser cut versus uh, uh, a rotary cut. Rotary cuts on your left. You can see the micro fractures. You can see all the debris created by that. And on the right is the laser cut. Wide open dentinal tubules. Less chance of post-operative sensitivity. And this is one of my favorite videos of all time. This is a three surface resin restoration. Why? Because the patient asked that this tooth be fixed. You know, lots of different ways to fix it, but when you got the right tool, this makes it pretty easy. Um, all I'm doing with the laser, and that's the laser with the um, clear tip, there's energy coming out of there, and there's water coming out of there. And I'm just making a long bevel, a couple millimeters long, to increase my retention, strength of the restoration. And, um, and the reason there's water coming out of there, it's actually the water that's doing the, uh, the cutting on the tooth structure. It's not the laser energy. But when those two things meet up, the laser energy and the water molecules, the water molecules explode and they do the physical cutting on the uh, uh, hard tissue surface. So just a quick case to show you the uh, value of having having the laser in the office. Another video just showing you a uh, pretty rapid cavity preparation on uh, on a uh, it's like number 19 or 18 somewhere back there and uh, notice when when I'm firing the laser you barely have to move it um, and it will the cause of laser energy, it seeks out water. Like I showed you in that earlier slide, it seeks out the water. So we all know that there's water in caries. And so it's gonna selectively cut those uh, caries out before it does any damage to any other part of the tube. So a pretty neat uh, device to have in the office. Again, a one surface posterior resin. <clears throat> So, and we do a lot of minimally invasive fast dentistry. Um, and, you know, you got to have the right tools. We have uh, the lasers um, and, you know, the uh, uh, super topical. Now, this TAC 20 gel, I've been using it for about 20 years, about as long as I've been a laser assisted dentist. And uh, it's really neat stuff. It's a super powerful topical. Uh, I enjoy not having to uh, inject people. Don't mind it, but uh, you know, if you don't need to, you don't need to. But what you see on the end of that cotton tip applicator is enough to do a phrenectomy. And it feels like you've had an injection. And chemically, this is what's in there. 20% uh, lidocaine, 4% tetracaine, and 2% phenylephrine. The phenylephrine, of course, gives, gives it the staying power, and we always get it in a viscous base. This is the same kind of stuff they spray down your throat before they do a scope on you. 
So you can imagine how strong this is, but just those three chemicals in a viscous base. Um, and application of it, I can tell you for sure, if you rub it on there, you're gonna cause an ulcer. You just place it on there and let it sit. Um, um, not, not more than just a few seconds, really, 30 to 60 seconds. And you gotta flush it out really, really good. And within uh, two to three minutes, you, you know, the patient feels like they've uh, had an injection. Pretty good stuff. So in a case like this, this is a no anesthesia case. And you can see the decay going up under the gum line there. Well, we know we've got to remove all the disease, but what's the number one reason for uh, failure for uh, uh, class five residents? It, it's failure to control the uh, um, bonding environment. You know, you get a little bit of moisture in there, saliva in particular, it, it's gonna lead to an early failure. So with laser, we're able to go in, take that gum tissue off and access the, uh, the diseased area, go in and finish it up and then place our restoration, okay? And I know there's a difference between um, the um, eight and nine, but um, that's that's the cost of um, getting rid of the diseased part of the of the two. Uh, in this case, it didn't it didn't matter. You know, I've been doing this long enough to say it's not going to be even up there, and the patient didn't show it anyway, so it didn't matter. Good to go. Twenty three thirty. Now we have another code. This forty two twelve. Not sure how many people use this, but this is the um, this is the code for um, um, a gingivectomy or gingivoplasty to aid in a restorative procedure. And if we if we move gum tissue for uh, restoration, we also include this 4212 in there. And another quick case of uh, doing some multiple restorations there, and, and a 4212 getting the gum tissue back away and some restorations placed in there. So we do this all day long, so, you know, uh, and I'm always real happy because we can move through stuff pretty fast. These are like, you blast the um, uh, little bit of enamel there, a little bit of uh, dentin, a little bit of cementum. You know, it takes about three seconds to do one of these kind of preps, you etch, bond, um, and restore. And, you know, don't forget, you also have to check the occlusion before you start, by the way. Those notches aren't, aren't from toothbrush abrasion, they're from uh, a poor occlusion, usually lateral excursion. So I can sit there and do these things all day long, not a big deal. So let's do some math. I always like doing this part of it. This is uh, from about two years ago now. And a patient comes in with multiple uh, cavities and hygiene, and we do a complete um, treatment plan for him. But the real reason he came in was this fractured front too. And, um, and as typical, we always have patients go through hygiene first, and we do a lot of same day dentistry. So I knew after, after uh, I examined him uh, and asked the mom, you know, do you want to do these today? And she said, sure, if you've got time. I always have time to uh, be productive. So we go in, um, you know, multiple restorations <clears throat> and um, came out to like 980 bucks. I know my fees were real low compared to you all. Don't say anything bad. But um, these, are, these are like little laser preps. Remember I said, you just have to remove the diseased part. The rest of it's healthy tooth structure, leave it alone. And uh, you know, just the multiple little preps that we did on them, multiple little restorations, and we fixed the front tooth that he actually came in for. Now what you didn't see in there, we did a bunch of other uh, composite resins and you know the kid wasn't in the chair for 40 minutes um, and absolutely no anesthesia necessary and the beauty of that is there's not going to be a post-operative uh, occlusion problem the bites right when they leave and um, 
and always have a happy patient mom doctor and team the most important person in that equation of course is the mom so and we do a lot of uh, special needs patients in the office too uh, we do a ton actually um, and uh, doesn't matter uh, never refuse service to a special needs patient and oftentimes we have to take them to the hospital, but you'd be surprised how much we get done with the laser. It makes a little popping sound. Uh, kids think it's hilarious. Um, some adults uh, still get freaked out, but um, you know, it's just a popping sound. So we named ourselves Kids Are Us at one time. Now in, in this uh, little video, um, I know, um, I know there's some politics involved here, but I'm showing you how I'm training a, uh, a dental therapist. This is my oldest grandson, Philip, and uh, he's in hygiene today. That's his mom sitting there. And uh, you know, if I can train my five-year-old to uh, clean teeth, that's a joke, guys. I'm just saying. You know, it's a lot of fun um, having grandkids and and uh, you know, they think this is a very special place because we do all kinds of neat stuff. And um, um, so there's, uh, there's always fun in every day that we work at the office. <clears throat> so we, we coined this term pedo lace because we do, we see a lot of kids and uh, we see the same cavities that you guys do or same problems and we just go in and we do uh, the, the restorations, the, uh, we prep them uh, probably 99% of the time. I just use the laser on uh, kids, uh, maybe a slow speed round bar occasionally also, but uh, mostly the um, um, laser. And we do the same kind of fillings you all do out there. Uh, place them on there, Fuji 9 happens to be uh, my restorative, uh, posterior restorative for deciduous tea and um, uh, sonic fill for anterior tea. Just uh, things we find that uh, works real good in the office. Okay, so these are my own uh, thoughts about this. Real easy, remove the diseased part of the tooth when you're dealing with kids and remove any unsupported enamel. And then then real easily, it just restore it. It just doesn't get any better than that. So um, that's why I think kids and lasers go together. Again, more examples of, of um, working with kids. Yes, we do pulpotomies with the laser. I uh, haven't used chemicals uh, for, for a pulpotomy and couldn't tell you how long, but it's been a long, long time for sure. And, uh, real happy to be able to do that and uh, again fuji after the uh, pulpotomy and we do soft tissue things with that too this was this was strictly uh, done with tac 20 gel on a small child removing that papilloma that was there because the mom thought the uh, kid was possessed okay how about that and uh you know in a case like this, more soft tissue stuff, again, no, no anesthesia was used <clears throat> except topical back here. And uh, this is a, uh, not the cavity that you see there, but we're actually removing the um, uh, tissue back there, the operculum, it's properly termed, so that we can get a good, uh, surface to uh, do our cavity prep in that uh, in that area back there. Now number 30 there uh, obviously I couldn't do anything with that with the laser because it was a pulpal exposure but 31 was good. Didn't have to worry about that at all and the ADA CDT code for that is uh, 7971 the excision excision of pericoronal gingiva <clears throat> and uh, so you can see we do a ton of stuff with the laser and uh, it's so much fun I can't even tell you how much fun it is now 
we do our morning huddles. <clears throat> and the most important reason, of course, is to do our production per hour, key performance indicator, production per hour. And when we do that, <clears throat> it's so important because I know what our overhead's going to be every single day. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're scheduling for uh, proper production. And as you can imagine, Swedish sound in any language is a person's name. And uh, we use names here like you can't imagine. Nobody walks in without us knowing their name. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. So, and that really helps, believe it or not. If you know their name and, and you use it often, um, you, you build trust with patients that way. And that's a, a whole lot of the reason why we get to use lasers so often is patients trust us when we say there's a sensation, but it won't be uncomfortable. But, you know, there's, there's many times when uh, they need to be anesthetized. Uh, some of those patients need to have IV sedation out in the parking lot before they even come in, uh, but we know them. So, we, you know, we're, we're happy to be able to uh, provide that service. Now let's look at uh, laser-assisted perio just quickly. This is using that same Sopro Care camera system in perio mode. And you can see how, how it really makes the plaque and calculus look awful to a patient. These are, these are before and afters that we give to the patients. And uh, they see what a good job we did afterwards. It's like night and day. And, uh, you know, it's motivation for the patient to try and do a little bit more. Uh, home hygiene, and um, you know we're real happy to um, provide this service for patients. It means a lot to them when they can actually see it up on the screen. Now, uh, gum disease, chronic bacterial infection. You know we keep it pretty simple here, and um, it affects the uh, gum and bone that support the teeth. Now the two keys for diagnosis. Pocket depths of four or more millimeters, which is loss of attachment, and or, notice I say and or, bleeding on probing. Bleeding on probing is a, is a cardinal sign of inflammation. So uh, if it's uh, inflamed, it, it is going to uh, create some problems there. Beauty of the laser uh, in, in treating uh, gum disease is you don't have to think about it. How would you like to have that every day at your disposal? It's great. Hygienists in West Virginia cannot use lasers at this point. Hopefully that's going to change soon. But um, on the machine itself, there's, uh, they call it repair. Doesn't matter what you call it, but uh, there's like eight steps that you go through. And they're not all laser uh, steps either, but kind of keeps you uh, on the program and pointed in the right direction. So we have repair steps one through four and steps five through eight. And uh, <clears throat> all the uh, settings are embedded in the software. And again, I've said this uh, uh, many times, once you learn how to use the, the motion of the handpiece, then you can be very effective at, um, at doing uh, treatment with the laser in the case of gum disease. So one of the key things is there's little diagrams on the uh, face of the laser too that helps you get your angles right, uh, keep your steps in line, and um, shows you, tells you what tips, what handpiece, and what tips to use. So in our office, we do a comprehensive uh, perio evaluation or we do a full mouth debridement at their first appointment if they have signs of gum disease. And, um, and then uh, we have them back in four weeks. Uh, typically, uh, if they have scaling and root planing, we still do scaling and root planing traditionally. 
And, um, and then at, at that point, we're going to stop and reevaluate them in six weeks. Now, during that, um, during their scaling and root planning, we're telling them that uh, if this is unsuccessful, we may have to do some laser therapy and or some surgery. Okay. So we try, try real hard to, uh, no surprises for the patients. So if there are residual pockets, then we know we're going to use the laser. And, and that's probably about 80% of the cases that we do. So um, uh, you, you just got to keep in mind that the key is the super bony pockets to restore normal gingival architecture. Uh, when we're going through there, if you're going to do gingivectomies first or, um, you know, just got to, got to remember where the bone level is at. And so <clears throat> it's a really easy thing to do, you know, follow the, uh, follow the instructions on the screen, learn the motion of the handpiece. All the uh, technical settings are done for you. So one of the one of the uh, neatest things that came along seven or eight years ago was they um, introduced radial firing periodontal tips. Now this one's at uh, it's called a five. It means it's uh, uh, five hundred microns in diameter at the cone shape down there, and it it kind of fits in geometrically if it fits into a diseased pocket. And this is what it looks like uh, when it's firing uh, thermal energy out of it. So pretty neat design. Again, we do our typical uh, scaling and root planning or bloodletting, however you want to call that. And um, then we go in and, and use the laser. And um, again, you know, with the uh, right tools, you can you can accomplish just about anything. And um, this, this makes it very efficient. It's definitely practical um, to be able to go in and, and remove the uh, diseased inner epithelial lining in there. So, and this is removing the outer epithelial layer because there's a cellular race going on in there. We want the um, uh, connective tissue cells to reattach to the root surface but the, unfortunately, the epithelial cells will, will beat the, the connective tissue cells in time. It's pretty rapid. So <clears throat> and the picture of beauty is when, when it's healthy. And uh, our goal is always to get it under four millimeters and definitely no bleeding on probing. So lasers are all over the place. They're, they're just not really as dominant in dentistry, but uh, I know my vet um, got into lasers only three or four years ago, but um, uh, you can see on the bottom left down there, a photomodulation, reduced pain, reduced inflammation, and increased healing speed. And we're all the same. We do more for our pets than we do for, for uh, our own kids sometimes, I think. But um, they advertise that uh, even tooth extraction pain relief. You know, they're, they're really into it. Uh, uh, our uh, uh, vets have been uh, wildly successful with lasers. And just to let you know, they anywhere from 250 to 300 bucks for one application. That's a lot more than I get. There's my car it's still here, getting old. And uh, but lasers, you know, you got to think about the precision of the uh, of lasers. And uh, you know, the military's been using them for a long, long time. Uh, again, we we have not been rapid to adopt them in dentistry, but it's worth it. This is my son Daniel. He's an endodontist, and that's his wife uh, Emily. She's a general dentist, and. Um, <clears throat> They they do use lasers in endodontics, and you can see the uh, little different beam pattern for a laser uh, endo tip. Just still a nice tip, and this is what it looks like in in on the handpiece. There's no two three long long enough that that you can't get the laser tip into, 
And there you can see down at the bottom of the screen, the uh, conical shape of the, um, of the uh, tip. And pretty, pretty fascinating to, to get, uh, get in results. And that's a red laser pointer that's uh, shining through the extracted tooth there. Um, and in a tighter area, the energy is more concentrated. Uh, so as you go, go uh, up through the root surface, you actually have to spend a little more time, the uh, more coronal, coronal you go, just to uh, uh, make sure you cover the surface area. The end of the roots, the easy one. <clears throat> and this is what, uh, this is what uh, SEMs look like after you've done your procedure. Down on the bottom, that's the rotary reciprocation and the laser step back. So I use uh, reciprocation, and I know that creates some smear in the canal system. So I always take the laser in there to, to get um, more, uh, a cleaner surface for the, uh, uh, endo resin to uh, adhere to secret of these things, highly flexible. And they, it makes it uh, real easy to get in and outside of a canal. Again, everything's done for you. All you've got to do is know the motion of the handpiece. And it's just a quick video that'll show you the, uh, uh, actually using the, uh, the laser inside of the, uh, <clears throat> two and it's not real hard doesn't take a lot of practice to get good at this you know the, the whole idea is if you do it you'll be successful with it and a couple of cases that we did you know the, the other central there you can see the large radiolucent area now, after we use the laser, which went all the way through the apex down there, we don't force anything out like that, but um, we certainly know that in the periapical area, it's either infection or granuloma or cyst, and lasers work best in that. So in a, one more clinical case that you um, see large areas that um, we do have plants here, and I, prefer to do implants more often, but uh, when she said try and save it, and I did. And uh, so from one year to the next, you can see the bone that's filled back in there very well. And uh, let's see, this case, people come in, when this lady flashed me with this lesion up in, in the top of her mouth like that, I said, are you kidding me? But um, this is what I, got to work with in there. So the whole idea was to uh, take that, uh, that area up there. This was a previous apico, obviously. And, uh, you know, do you, do you treat it or not? Uh, again, I prefer to take it out and put an implant in, but um, the lady insisted. And usually I'm not hard to convince, so we went ahead and saved that. Now, you know, about a year later, after we deemed that the tooth was uh, going to be salvaged, we went ahead and did a, uh, um, after the apicone cleaning all that out, we got to do some crown preps in there. Um, now, they were done with rotary, but the gum tissue was uh, done with uh, the laser and some same day crowns that we put on there. <clears throat> So this was the beginning. This was immediately afterwards. Uh, that is uh, graft material in there in the periapical area. One last case. We purposely uh, shoved the gutta perch out as far as we could because we knew we'd be surgerizing this area. And that's exactly what we did. So we could see exactly where we were going. And again, once we cleaned it out with the laser, <clears throat> we put graft material in there. Successful case. Always a lot of fun doing things if you have the right tools. So laser energy can penetrate deeper than bacteria can penetrate. 
And uh, even better than chemical rinses, the laser can penetrate greater than 1,000 microns. It's like a no-brainer and it's helped our success rate in endo tremendously. And some laser lesion destruction, immediate pain relief, faster healing times. Again, the setting is right there for you. You've just got to know how to use the handpiece. Uh, these Athos ulcers uh, uh, are, are, I've seen a ton of them, even though we're on emergency care only. You know, patients are having pain, so we go in and treat these things. And, um, you know, I guess everybody's under more stress right now, like me, uh, from not working much. And uh, we go in and treat it. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step procedure. You go in with the laser, you treat the red halo area. That's where the pain is coming from. That's your zone of inflammation. You just put a little frosting on that. And then you re-wet the tissue. The beauty of this is the pain stops immediately and they do heal faster. And just like this little girl came in, nothing worse than a uh, um, uh, aphthous ulcer on a frenum attachment. You know, you can't really function too well like that. But we go in and treat it, and this is her immediately afterwards. Really, really sweet little girl from there to there. But who was happiest? Her, me, or her mom? Her mom was. You know, she, she has sent, um, I couldn't tell you, probably a couple hundred patients to the office for taking care of her little girl. How about, uh, how about herpetic lesions? We have the perfect tool for that, where we can go in and actually get a high viral kill, any virus, including coronavirus, which is not on your lips uh, that we know of yet, that it is, but it's probably too early to say that. But for herpes, we go in and treat those things. <clears throat> and, um, you know, this is a great service for patients. Typically, the lesion never comes back in the same place. And uh, this was just about 10 days out from, uh, from when we treated it. So we use a couple different codes with that, the D7465 or D9110. Uh, and, and occasionally, we also use a, um, um, a medical code for that. That, that just depends on lots of things, but uh, the SCD-10 and the current procedural terminology for medical insurance. We treat a lot of late-term herpetic lesions too. Just for that reason, like I said, if you treat it now, it, it may never come back in the same place. At the ulcer on the side of the tongue, uh, those are painful, hard to, hard to function and talk when you're in pain like that. So we just go in, this takes about, I wanna say five to seven seconds, 10, 15 at the most, it just depends, but uh, we just frost the area, re-wet it. And we actually use uh, chlorhexidine to re-wet these things. That tells us if we've been successful or not. If you put chlorhexidine on a lesion, it's going to burn. If you put it on a laser-treated lesion, it should be very comfortable to the patient at this point. And one last case like that, and this lady thought she had oral cancer, um, and it was painful to her, but, but what it really was, her tongue was rubbing on the side of a broken molar that she didn't know was broken. So we got to do a crown after that too, but we treated the lesion got her out of pain, and I went back and numbed her up and did a, did a crown prep for her. <clears throat> and this is her picture, at, uh, you know, because I always tell patients if I'm gonna use their photo, she looked at the picture and said, my God, Bruce, I look like West Virginia roadkill, yeah. which was pretty funny at the time, and it still is, because she definitely looked like that. <laughs> um, real sweet, been with me for, 40 years as a patient. So these are the codes that we typically use for that and we get paid for it, so it's all, all good. So let me give you 10 things that require zero talent. Let me check the time here and see how we're doing. I know we started late. 
<clears throat> and uh, so 10 things that require zero talent, being on time, <laughs> work ethic, effort, energy, body language, <clears throat> passion for what you're doing, and doing extra. It's no, no sweat to do a little bit extra. Uh, being prepared, being coachable, and uh, <clears throat> most important is your attitude. You know, if you could instill this in everybody you work with, you can rock and roll in dentistry. You can actually look forward to coming to work. I can't say it's like that every day, but I can tell you there's only one or two bad days in a year, and that's it. But it's all attitude. So laser phrenectomies, um, we do a lot of these. It's just a question of proper diagnosis. And um, <clears throat> having the lasers, you can, you can do anything you want with the tissue with the, with the proper laser. Lingual phrenectomies, no problem. It's funny to see somebody's tongue come halfway out of their mouth after you've uh, released their frenum. And it obviously causes speech uh, uh, problems also. And you get a patient like this who says, uh, I've got recession here. And, um, you know, of course, the first thing you do is check their occlusion and, and modify it if you have to. But uh, instead of doing a graft, she opted to uh, just have a, um, um, a vestibular extension there. And uh, the vestibular extension itself will create a zone of scar tissue down there. And once that scar tissue forms, uh, typically you won't see any more recession there. But uh, we've all heard the, uh, the phrase cutting like a hot knife in butter. That's exactly what I would tell you. This, it feels like when you're using the soft tissue mode of the laser. It's a pretty, pretty neat thing to do. Uh, always exciting. So we're gonna do that, end up with this, and a couple months later, it, um, there's scar tissue there, but no more recession. And one more phrenectomy, lingual phrenectomy there. You can see how thick this attachment is in there. And uh, sometimes you have to go deeper than, uh, but you've got to get, get all the attachment out of there or you face some relapse. And just about uh, 48 hours later, she's well on her way to healing in there. Okay, and in this case, <clears throat> this young lady told me exactly what she wanted. And uh, she wanted to look like Kathy Lee Gifford, the uh, gymnast, the talk show host, so on and so forth. And, and uh, you know, so I've uh, been doing it long enough to know that when I knew when I did my West Virginia style crown preps, that, um, you know, we would probably need to do a phrenectomy in that area or modify the uh, attached gingiva there so we wouldn't get recession afterwards. And uh, sure enough, we're in there doing that. And say, okay, let's do it. So this was something that was treatment plan. Of course, if, if we don't need to do it, uh, we don't do it. But, uh, and that, that would save the patient uh, about 400 and some bucks to get this, uh, not have to do it for an acne. But see how efficient this is. You know, all my videos are real time. Um, you know, so it doesn't take long to create that um, defect in there. And these are her uh, same big crowns after we finished. And this is her Facebook post. <laughs> she does look like Kathy Lee Gifford, and she is also a gymnast. But uh, when she said that to me, don't try to please everyone. Just do, do what you know is right. Um, uh, super person. So we do all our troughing with the laser. We have a new tip, uh, only about two years old. This radial firing periodontal tip, eight. It's 800 microns, 14 millimeters in length. This is how we get uh, get our uh, retraction for teeth. So we're going to do number nine here, and then you'll see the uh, 
I'm going to skip this video because I know we're getting close on time, but watch, watch how I go through this. You know, usually I can go, go around the uh, preparation one time and my margin is completely exposed. Now, if you know where the, where your bone is at, if you know where the bone is at, and you can, you can do just about anything you want to the gum tissue, but you've got to know where the bone is at. Otherwise, you know, you could uh, create some problems there. And you can see I'm using water there, but this is um, in S mode. And there's our uh, getting ready for our digital scan. And final product. Again, we do, it, do a lot of things same day. Hey, Tim, how are we doing on time before I... Well, we're getting towards the end of time here. If you uh, want to answer any the... questions, so I think uh, you, if you take about uh, three, four more minutes, wrap up, and then we'll hit as uh, many questions as we can. Uh, we'll probably avoid some of the coding questions and that, and uh, stick okay. with the clinical questions. Okay, so let me uh, let me get to a point. I want to just show you a couple of things we, we use in, with um, implants all the time. Uh, the lasers uh, do a lot of clinical crown lengthening, our tissue wise. And uh, we'll go right past this. I do, got, I do got a case I want to share with everybody. It's about a uh, 90 second case. There's another phrenectomies. Uncovering our lasers, uh, uncovering implants with the lasers, much safer than um, using electrosurgery, which we don't use for that. But um, there's a, you know, another case to uncover. Now, this is the case. <clears throat> this is really all about having the right tools. When this 18 year old girl walked into my office, uh, seemed to be 19, and she had this in her mouth and said, well, my previous dentist told me this is it. That's all, all I can ever hope to have is uh, a removable partial like this. Well, she had had ortho uh, into some uh, congenitally missing uh, lateral spaces, and uh, she wanted uh, to know about implants, and I said, why not? You know, so... As you can see, these are very tight parameters, uh, but um, this was a guided case, not free-handed or anything like that. And, you know, this is um, uh, having the right tools made it real easy to do. This is the day that um, we're getting ready to cement our crowns in there. <clears throat> but this is, this is like, a minute after we uh, uh, put our crowns in on seven and 10. And uh, if you look at the gum tissue, it uh, doesn't look too awful bad, but um, look what happens just a, uh, a few months out. <clears throat> look how stifled that gum tissue is. It's just like a miracle to me. Didn't realize I could do something like that. And this was a great learning case to, to see, you know, if you do have the right tools and you can, you can get all kinds of stuff done. So that was at 18 months. And this is, uh, I think, about uh, 24 months. She's an RN and, um, you know, really good at what she does. And this final case that I'll show you, uh, another benefit of the, uh, having the laser in the office is uh, you know we there was a foreign body in there and uh wasn't wasn't real sure i had a good idea what it was but you know and, and there was a little bit of uh, maybe an eighth of a carpule of uh, local anesthetic used in this case because you know she was pretty anxious as a patient but as we go down through there if i was using a scalpel now what would you see a whole lot of? Lots of hemorrhage, yeah. But notice, notice how we can control the amount of hemorrhage with the laser. Um, 
you know, which is a, a fascinating tool to have. And uh, as we slowly go down through there, you know, it's a highly vascular area, but um, watch what pops up out of there. Only in America, only in West Virginia can this happen, but uh, how about that? Pretty neat, huh? <laughs> so we've done we've done tons and tons of fun stuff with the uh, with the laser. Really enjoyed it. Uh, again, it's another tool in the office. There there are so many neat things to do, and that's probably what's kept me in dentistry all these years. But um, uh, lots of fun stuff to do. So, Tim, if you have some questions that you want to run by me, I'll be we I'll do try and we have. Answer about uh, 10 minutes so uh we will try and get to as many as we can but we're not going to get them to them all that's for sure uh you may be getting to the, all this but uh best laser to buy to get for a reasonable price i'm currently an associate i'm sorry i had you muted go oh, ahead uh, what is the best laser to buy at a reasonable price for an associate for an associate um so you know i have an associate in here now and um she uses what i use um but she's she's real productive with it uh best laser you know there's three or four in this class they all have their little um um things that uh, make it a better laser than the next one but um, I just uh, I'm real happy with what I use the uh, I plus which is made from BioLace uh, and even though uh, occasionally they pay me to uh, do informational seminars I don't have any stock or any other uh, reason to promote that I have recently used the Photana I thought that was a, uh, a pretty fascinating. It's got some uh, aesthetic character things that you can do with it uh, on the head and neck. And um, you know, I've just about used everything. One thing, the Solea, I was impressed with it too. But, you know, I, always, I would always come back to the ones I'm comfortable with, uh, mostly from an education standpoint, easy to use. Price-wise, you know, you could probably get a heck of a deal right now on any laser out there. Uh, nobody's selling anything. Just call them up and make them an offer. <laughs> I think it's really funny, but uh, but yeah. All right. How about concerns with heat generation and pulpal injury? So good point. Um, you know, in a full day presentation, I would show you that the uh, uh, laser actually cools the pulp when it's cutting, as opposed to a high speed that uh, raises the uh, pulpal temperature. It's nothing I would even think of while I'm working, but the research is there. Okay, I feel like prepping a tooth involves tactile sense. Do you struggle with that in the beginning? Okay, look at your monitor really good and look how old I am. No, nothing bothers me like that anymore. Uh, actually, um, in, in the very beginning, you know, I wasn't sure how close or how far away I was supposed to be with a burr you always know. Um, and, and I would tell you, you, you probably do 10 hard tissue procedures, you figure it out that fast. So no. Uh, you don't need tactile sensitivity now with the uh, this uh, gold handpiece, the slow speed. You can actually bury that in soft tissue, as you saw in my videos. I was actually touching the tissue, but that's a special setting on there. So there is tactile sensitivity with that. Good question. Okay. Any medical contraindication to the use of lasers? Um, Zero. Lasers are, are definitely safe. There's, uh, again, it's just heat energy that's coming out of the end of the tip. 
there's no radio frequencies or or any other such thing and yes i, I use them on um medically compromised patients um for, for anything no restrictions okay can you confirm no pain with laser even on deep carries approaching the pulp without anesthesia not me <laughs> if, if it's deep I've, I've probably anesthetized them before i started yeah okay. but for you. all your small to medium-sized cavities and you know even at that if you really know your patient, then you know what you can get away with with them. Uh, again, I just use that same phrase. You're going to feel a sensation, but it shouldn't be uncomfortable. And leave it at that. Okay. Uh, could you clarify what wavelength is needed to cut enamel? Um, this so I didn't mean to confuse you, but the 2780 is the hard and soft tissue wavelength 2780 nanometers uh, the 940 is just for soft tissue only you you can burn something with the 940 but that's not prepping anything okay is there specific re restorative materials you recommend when using laser cut preps yeah so for children uh, we use Fuji 9 in the uh, uh, posterior teeth, uh, any composite, anterior composite for anterior restorations. Uh, I just happen to use Sonic Fill because it's fast and easy. <clears throat> and uh, uh, for adult teeth, you know, we use Sonic Fill in the front and back. So uh, that's just what I use. Okay. Number of questions again about local anesthetic for pulp pulpotomies, uh, uh -huh. perio, endo, and pediatrics. When do you use local anesthetic? Um, <clears throat> obviously for all pulpotomies. You know, I wouldn't do that to my own kid, let alone somebody else's. Um, and you know, again, the the, the vision is this. If, if I know my patient, if I know that they've gone through hygiene where they actually, uh, you have a, a cavity in there and it looks like it's medium to large and they test it in there with quite simply by blowing hair inside of it. If the patient doesn't react, they're not gonna react to the laser. If they're a little bit uh, sensitive, you jump on it. And most non-vital teeth, by the way, you can um, uh, treat without without anesthesia, but it still hurts when you put a rubber dam on. So you might as well numb them up. Okay, are you using the TAC twenty when treating aphthous ulcers? None, zero. And the reason being, you want to know if your treatment's been effective. Remember, when you do that, if you're doing it right, there's only a sensation. It, you know, nobody complains about pain. What they complain about is, um, you know, the cost afterwards. But no, 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 TAC twenty for aphthous sulcers. Okay, uh, are you still using cords and astringents, or is everything laser troughed in your office? Everything since. Uh, uh, let me give you a year that I haven't used any any. Um, cord at all i mean it's it's probably been 30 years ago i haven't had lasers that long but at some point i was using electrosurgery to do that to do that very same thing so no cord not necessary no astringents remember the laser can coagulate uh, anything and uh, basically all we do is scrub the prep afterwards get rid of tissue tags and take our digital impression all righty uh do you worry about creating black triangles when troughing gingival tissue around anterior crown preps um you know what the key to that is if if you know where the bone level is no i don't worry about it now you know the 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 bone 
the biologic width is important on every single prep. I don't care if it's a, res, uh, a resin. You know, if you violate that, there's going to be a price to pay. Black triangles, <clears throat> um, we have another technique for that. Uh, Dr. Uh, Gigi Monarchy, the uh, faces expert, uh, taught me how to put filler in those black triangles into the, mm -hmm. into the gingiva, bulk it up, and you replace it about once a year and it looks great. Yeah. Okay, last question. What's the intraoral camera laser combo that you're using? The intraoral camera, that is, that's from Acteon. A C T E O N, and this one is called Sopro Care, C A R E, Sopro, S O P R O Care. Uh, they had an earlier version too that we used to use, but this one has a, a lot more features on it. It's pretty outstanding. Okay, and how's the best way for people to get a hold of you, Dr. Cassis? Um, Easiest, just email me. It's doc at cassisdentalcenter.com. Okay, terrific. Well, thank you again, and thank you to everybody that uh, attended the webinar today. I'm sorry we can't hit all your questions. We've got another webinar coming up at 2 30, uh, part of the Washington AGD Stay Home, Stay Healthy CE uh, webinar series. So with that, uh, Dr. Cassis, thank you, and uh, look forward uh, to speaking with you again. Thank you all. It's been my great pleasure to be with you today. Thanks. Thank you, Bruce. Thanks, Gary. Good to see you, buddy. Thank you, Val. Nice. Val, take us out.